Hello everybody and welcome to the next installment of my bookshelf tour series and today we're going to be talking about middle grade fiction. So I have all my middle grade on this one big shelf plus I also have a separate shelf with my Nancy Drew collection so we're doing that here because I consider pretty much all Nancy Drew books to be middle grade. Um, so let's begin with my big middle grade shelf with so You Want to Be a Wizard by Diane Duane. It's the first one I have at the top there. This is the first book in the Young Wizards series. The next one is Deep Wizardry, also by Diane Duane. High Wizardry by Diane Duane. A Wizard Abroad by Diane Duane. And then the last one I have is not the last one in the series, but it is The Wizard's Dilemma, also obviously by Diane Duane. Next we have my Series of Unfortunate Events series. The first one is The Bad Beginning by Lemony Snicket. The Reptile Room by Lemony Snicket. The Wide Window by Lemony Snicket. The Miserable Mill by Lemony Snicket. The Austere Academy by Lemony Snicket. The Ersatz Elevator by Lemony Snicket. The Vile Village by Lemony Snicket. The Hostile Hospital by Lemony Snicket. The Carnivorous Carnival by Nelmini Snicket. And this is the one paperback I have. I'm looking for just a really cheap hardback to complete this set in hardback editions. I'll find it sometime. The Slippery Slope by Lemony Snicket. The Grim Grotto by Lemony Snicket. The Penultimate Peril by Lemony Snicket. And then the last one in the series is The End by Lemony Snicket. I remember this book originally was titled The Final Failure, and it's always bugged me that they changed the title of the book so that they don't have like matching alliterative titles anymore, but whatever. Next we have The Schwa Was Here by Neil Schusterman. Who Was That Masked Man Anyway? by Avi. Romeo and Juliet, together and alive at last, also by Avi. Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Flight to Eris, also by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Peter Pan by James M. Barry. The first book in the Spiderwick Chronicles, which is called The Field Guide by Holly Black and Tony Dieterlitzi. Half Magic by Edward Eager. Magic by the Lake, also by Edward Eager. Blooming at the Texas Sunrise Motel by Kimberly Willis Holt. Next shelf down, we have the Chronicles of Narnia series. So this is The Magician's Nephew by C.S. Lewis. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. And rest in peace. That fell straight to the ground. <laughs> Don't worry. It's fine. The Horse and His Boy by C.S. Lewis. Prince Caspian by C.S. Lewis. 
The Voyage of the Dawn Treader by C.S. Lewis. The Silver Chair, also by C.S. Lewis. And then finally, The Last Battle by C.S. Lewis. Peter and the Star Catchers by Dave Barry and Ridley Pearson. Peter and the Shadow Thieves by Dave Barry and Ridley Pearson. The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valente. The Girl Who Fell Beneath Fairyland and Led the Revels There by Catherine M. Valente. The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. Charlie Bone and the Time Twister by Jenny Nimmo. Charlie Bone and the Invisible Boy, also by Jenny Nimmo. I think these are books two and three in the Charlie Bone series. I really want to reread these because I loved them so much when I was a kid but I don't remember a lot about them besides just really being obsessed with them. So this is a full cast dramatization of the Lord of the Rings series by J.R.R. Tolkien. I guess it's not technically middle grade, but this is just where I have it on my shelf. And you can see all the cassette tapes of the program in here. It's really beautiful. I love this. Don't know when I'm going to listen to it though. And then this book below it is technically Breaking Dawn from the Twilight series by Stephanie Meyer, but I've just been using it for book related art projects. So like half the pages are cut up. So it doesn't really count. Next up is Jeremy Fink and the Meaning of Life by Wendy Mass. And then A Mango Shaped Space also by Wendy Mass. I really love both of these books. She's a great middle grade author. And then the last one on this shelf is The Rise and Fall of a Theater Geek by Seth Rudetsky. Moving on to the next shelf, we have Wildwood by Colin Malloy and illustrations by Carson Ellis. The Wolf Wilder by Catherine Rundell. Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt. P.S. Longer Letter Later by Paula Danziger and Anne M. Martin. Briar Rose by Jane Yolen. Cat on a Hottie's Tin Roof by Shelley Swanson Satterin. Fever, 1793, by Lori Hulse Anderson. Breadcrumbs, by Anne Ursu. The Real Boy, also by Anne Ursu. Running Out of Time, by Margaret Peterson Haddix. Safi's Angel, by Hilary McKay. Indigo's Star, also by Hilary McKay. And then Dolphin Luck by Hilary McKay. The Dark Pond by Joseph Bruchak. Holes by Lewis Satcher. More Sideways Arithmetic from Wayside School by Lewis Satcher and Sideways Stories from Wayside School by Lewis Satcher. There's a Boy in the Girl's Bathroom, also by Lewis Satcher. Magic in the Park by Ruth Chu. Zinc by Sherry Bennett. Sammy Keys and the Hotel Thief by Wendelin Van Dronen. This is the first book in the Sammy Keys series. I've read a ton of them, but 
I only own this single one. Freaky Friday by Mary Rogers. The Secret Life of Amanda K. Woods by Anne Cameron. The Second Mrs. Giaconda by E. L. Konigsberg. Deaf Child Crossing by Marley Matlin. Private Peaceful by Michael Mapurgo. Love That Dog by Sharon Creech. Hidden by Helen Frost. How to Disappear Completely and Never Be Found by Sarah Nickerson. Matilda by Roald Dahl. The Magic Finger by Roald Dahl. James and the Giant Peach, also by Roald Dahl. And Boy by Roald Dahl. Regarding the Fountain by Kate Kleiss with illustrations by M. Sarah Kleiss. Heartbeat by Sharon Creech. And realizing that this was uh, not together with my other Sharon Creech book. We're just going to slide those over. That's much better. Fortunately, The Milk by Neil Gaiman. And this is the start of my little mini collection of books with the word Karen in the title because I guess I'm just a narcissist like that. I always buy books with my name in the title if I find them for not too much money. So I have a bunch of Babysitter's Club books because there's a little sister spinoff all about Karen. So all of them have Karen in the title. So this is Karen's Sleepover by Anne M. Martin. Karen's Brothers by Anne M. Martin. Karen's Home Run by Anne M. Martin. Karen's Little Witch by Anne M. Martin. Karen's Mermaid by Anne M. Martin. Karen's Pony Camp by Anne M. Martin. Karen's Puppet Show by Anne M. Martin. Karen's Big Job by Anne M. Martin. And then we have Karen's Perfect Match by Janet Quinn Harkin. This is part of the Boyfriend Club series. I've never really heard of it outside of this one book. And then the last one on this shelf and in my little collection is Tough Luck Karen by Johanna Hurwitz. All right, next shelf down, we have my Harry Potter books. The first one that I have here is The Tales of Beetle the Bard by J.K. Rowling. And then we have Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling. I have the first two books in paperback and then the rest in hardcover, which on one level kind of bugs me because they look weird, but also these are the books that like I've owned and read since I was a child, so I don't really want to part with them. Next is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets by J.K. Rowling. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling. And I am missing the dust jacket on this one, so it looks real bad, but don't know where that went. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix by J.K. Rowling. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince by J.K. Rowling. And then Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, also by J.K. Rowling. The Shadow Thieves by Anne Ursu. The Siren Song, also by Anne Ursu. Wonderstruck by Brian Selznick. The Invention of Hugo Cabret, also by Brian Selznick. This is the complete fairy tales by the Brothers Grimm. The Spellbook of Listen Taylor by Jacqueline Moriarty. 
Doll Bones by Holly Black. Cartwheeling in Thunderstorms by Catherine Rundell. Liesel and Poe by Lauren Oliver. And then the last book on this shelf is Heart of a Samurai by Margie Price. Next shelf down, we have Giant Treasury of Beatrix Potter by Beatrix Potter, of course. Alejandro's Gift by Richard E. Albert, illustrations by Sylvia Long. One Morning in Maine by Robert McCloskey. This clip I had to very hastily insert after filming and editing everything because I forgot I had been using it as part of my tripod setup. It is Pop-Up Animal Alphabet Book by C.B. Surf. Next is Hollow Earth by John Barrowman and Carol E. Barrowman. The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. Small Steps by Lewis Satcher. This is technically part of the Holes series, and I do have these books separated because it's very complicated to try to mix paperbacks and hardbacks, especially on my middle grade shelves. This next book is also separated from its first in the series, which I have in paperback. It is Snail Mail No More by Paula Danziger and Anne M. Martin. Harriet the Spy by Louise Fitzhugh. Crossover by Kwame Alexander. Playing a Part by Daria Wilk. First Light by Rebecca Stead. The Gauntlet by Karuna Riazi. The Card Turner by Lewis Satcher. And I've realized even though I can't put my Holes books together, I can at least have my two Lewis Satcher books on this shelf next to each other. So we're going to slide that over here. There we go. Next up is 13 by Jason Robert Brown and Dan Elish. Ever by Gail Carson Levine. Flying Lessons and Other Stories, edited by Ellen O. Binny for Short by Hilary McKay. Chasing Redbird by Sharon Creech. Sisters of the Sword by Maya Snow. Anna and the Swallow Man by Gabrielle Savit. The Wanderer, also by Sharon Creech. And rest in peace, there it goes. And I'm gonna pick that back up and put it next to my other Sharon Creech book, I don't know why they weren't sitting next to each other in the first place. My shelves were clearly not organized. <laughs> Trash by Andy Mulligan is next. City of Orphans by Avi. Seer of Shadows, also by Avi. Rest in peace to that one too. And this one I end up catching, but I'm really struggling over here. It is Poppy, also by Avi. The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin. The Witches by Roald Dahl. A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. And the last one on this shelf is Girl in a Cage by Jane Yolen and Robert J. Harris. So that's the end of all my general middle grade fiction. Now we're going to move on to my Nancy Drew shelf. It is right over here. We're starting out, of course, with Secret of the Old Clock by Carolyn Keene. 
and I am not going to be saying Carolyn Keene as the author for all these books because I think I'm going to lose my mind. I'm just going to be listing all the titles. Carolyn Keene is a pseudonym anyway, so she didn't even write the book. She doesn't exist. I don't, I don't think we need to say her name. All right, so let's begin with all my Nancy Drew books. Nancy's Mysterious Letter. The Mystery of the Ivory Charm. The Whispering Statue. The Haunted Bridge. The Clue in the Old Album. The Clue of the Leaning Chimney. The Secret of the Wooden Lady. Mystery at the Ski Jump. The Clue of the Velvet Mask. The Ringmaster's Secret. The Haunted Showboat. The Secret of the Golden Pavilion. The Clue in the Old Stagecoach. The Mystery of the Fire Dragon. The Moonstone Castle Mystery. The Mystery of the 99 Steps. The Crooked Bannister. This one is a two-in-one. There's The Mystery of the Moss-Covered Mansion, which I haven't read, and then The Quest of the Missing Map, which I have. The Witch Tree Symbol. The 80th Anniversary Edition of The Secret of the Old Clock. The Hidden Staircase. The Bungalow Mystery. The Mystery at Lilac Inn. The Secret of Shadow Ranch. The Secret of Redgate Farm. The Clue in the Diary. The Sign of the Twisted Candles. The Message in the Hollow Oak. The Whispering Statue. Yes, I have multiple copies of a couple of these because I'm collecting them in both the super old yellow hardbacks and then the newer hardbacks. So a few of them have doubles across these two different groups. The Haunted Bridge. The Mystery of the Brass Bound Trunk. The Quest of the Missing Map. The Mystery of the Tolling Bell. The Clue in the Old Album. The Secret of the Golden Pavilion and Mystery of the Glowing Eye. All these covers crack me up, but this one especially, like, <laughs> look at it. Warning, Cyclops, it's so dramatic. All right, next shelf down, we have a bunch of random, like modern paperback Nancy Drews. So this is the Puzzle at Pineview School, the Nutcracker Ballet Mystery, Trouble at Lake Tahoe. The Wedding Day Mystery. The Case of Capital Intrigue. The Case of the Captured Queen. The Case of the Lost Song. Danger on the Great Lakes. Nancy Drew and Hardy Boy's Super Mystery, which I always love. Terror on Tour. And I do think this one is really funny because they always bill it as Carolyn Keene and Franklin W. Dixon as co-writers, as if they're like buddies that know each other. 
another Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys super sleuths combo. This is a series of short stories. I think there's like seven little mini mysteries in this book. Not Nice on Ice. Portrait in Crime. Deep Secrets. A Model Crime. Trail of Lies. Cold as Ice. Loving and Losing. Another Nancy Drew Hardy Boys crossover. This is Islands of Intrigue. Without a Trace. A Race Against Time. Pit of Vipers. The Scarlet Macaw Scandal. Mystery at Malachite Mansion. Valentine's Day Secret. The Halloween Hoax. And this one is the first book in a very weird Nancy Drew graphic novel series. It's called The Demon of River Heights. I have a bunch of these. Writ in Stone. The Haunted Dollhouse. Doggone Town. City Under the Basement. Cliffhanger. High School Musical Mystery Part 1. And a Hardy Boys graphic novel, Abra Cadeth. That's a little bonus. And then one more Hardy Boys graphic novel called Crawling with Zombies. So this one here is technically not a Nancy Drew book. It is a nonfiction book called Girl Sleuth, Nancy Drew and the Women Who Created Her by Melanie Rehock. And I just think that this is so cool. Of course, I put it on my Nancy Drew shelf because it's Nancy Drew related but it is like a nonfiction book about the creation of Nancy Drew. Then this one is also technically not a Nancy Drew book. It's like a Nancy Drew parody series. I think they're called the Nancy Clue books. And this one is called The Case of the Good for Nothing Girlfriend by Mabel Maney. And it's basically just making fun of Nancy Drew. I think it's a little bit more adult. And then the last book on the shelf is a bonus Hardy Boys book that I just happen to own, and it is The House on the Cliff by Franklin W. Dixon. And that is the end of my middle grade book collection. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you guys tomorrow with my nonfiction books. So that's it for now. Thank you. Bye.